Hello, welcome back to Brian's Molting Metal Updates. This is collection update number four, another all vinyl update. I've got nine records to show you. Good stuff, I think. Uh, programming note. Next video will be all CDs. So if you're into CDs, look out for that. Uh, I've still got plenty of vinyl to show too, so don't worry. I'm going to mix it up. Just mix it up a little. Might even throw in an all-tape video. Thinking about it. I don't have that many tapes. Don't like tapes as much. I bought a tape deck. I bought some tapes. And it's my least favorite format. And I'm finding it hard sometimes to pull the trigger. You know. I'm only buying tapes if it's only been released on tape. If it's been released on tape and... CD, I'm buying the CD nine times out of ten, at least. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I shouldn't. I shouldn't bash tapes. I know people like tapes. I used to be a tape guy, right? I loved loved tapes back in the day. Of course, I remember when CDs became a thing, and it was mind blowing to me. You know. Anyway, I'm I'm rambling, and I haven't even started yet. Uh, have I thanked you for liking? I don't think so. Thank you, everyone that's been liking and subscribing. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll just jump right in. The first record I'm going to show you, you know it. You love it. And I just had to add this to my collection because this is just a must-own, in my opinion. And that is Exodus, Bonded by Blood. Their first album from 1985. Paul Bailoff on vocals, of course. Great album. There is an insert, which is the same photo collage from the inside and the cover again. So, kind of pointless, but I'm not complaining, you know. Whatever. It was a Brooklyn Vegan exclusive color variant. And it's really nice, kind of translucent. See, so like the blood, blood splatter, blood spatter, blood splatter, whatever. Really nice. Limited. I think it was limited to like 300, maybe. And it sold out really fast. But I jumped right on it because I just knew had to have it in my collection. So I tried to pick a favorite song. And there's just so many good songs. Just, it's, this is loaded, right? You know this, right? I'm going to stop talking. You know, Bay Area Thrash, they were there from the beginning. You know, Godfathers, I guess. Uh, not a member of the Big Four. You know, some people think they should be, right? Others think Testament should be, you know. But at least we agree at the Anthrax that would go. In that case, I, I think. That's my understanding. But I'm not going to go that far. I mean, I'm okay with the big four as is. But great, great album. Great debut. Must own. Classic. Right. Next up, you could almost say the same about this album. Classic album. Thrash. Thrash. Also from 1985, this is Overkill, Feel the Fire, another classic album, right? It's like you could just, it's loaded. Completely forgot that Sonic Reducer was on here, you know? For some reason that didn't, I didn't remember that, it kind of surprised me, but. Now these other songs, you remember them, you know, Feel the Fire and, you know, Raise the Dead. I'm reading it backwards in the screen. It's great stuff. But like I said, you know that. Didn't say that it was on colored vinyl, but it is in fact on a nice black and green. Really matches. I like it when vinyl matches the cover, you know. It makes it seem less gimmicky when they actually do a good job matching the color scheme of the album cover, I think. Next up, 
This is also classic, I think. Don't really hear people talking about this that much. I mean, they're a band, like, they only did two full-length albums, so they didn't have a lot of longevity, I guess. Uh, this is from 1987. This is Wehrmacht. I can't speak German, but it's Wehrmacht. Shark Attack. Five Piece. They're listed as Crossover Thrash on the Metal Archives. Lyrics, band photos. And I guess technically they are crossover thrash. I always just consider them thrash, though. But I had this dimension. I had this on cassette. I've done more than one take of this video, and I'm forgetting now. But I had this on cassette. New Renaissance Records put this out on cassette. And probably vinyl, too. But I own the cassette back in the day. This was mind-blowing stuff when it came out. Just the speed. I mean, lightning fast, you know, riffs. You know, Napalm Shower is, that's just, if I had to pick a favorite, Napalm Shower is just a great song. Uh, could do without Puke, the opening track on side B, but that's just my personal preference. Uh... No, it's just, you know, fretboard gymnastics is the name of an instrumental. That gives you an idea. It's just, it's great, great, super fast, crossover thrash, 1987. They did a second album called Beermacht, which I didn't like as much. That's my memory. I had that on cassette also. My memory was I didn't like it as much. Now, I'll probably eventually check it out again, you know, stream it and, and see, but... You know, so I don't know. I mean, where do these guys rank, you know, for everybody? Because I, I just, I've always loved this album. And I just had to, when I saw it, I had to own it. So, beer mocked. I'm not going to talk about their name because, you know, it was the 80s and nobody cared. You know, that they named their band after a Nazi army. It sounds cool, you know, that's all that mattered. Next up, how about some blackened speed metal, Bewitcher, Under the Witching Cross. They are a three-piece from, also from Portland, Oregon. It is not a gatefold. There is a really thick, really heavy, glossy lyrics on one side. And on the other, there's also a poster of the cover. I'm not going to pull that out because it's just a poster of that. And it is on glow in the dark vinyl. Now, I haven't tried to get it to glow in the dark yet. Before I upload this video, I'm going to leave it out and try to take a picture of it in the dark. And if I'm successful, I'll put it up here so you can see what it looks like going in the dark. Yeah, uh, Bewitcher. They're great. I love Bewitcher. I'm wearing the shirt. Saw them live in Chicago at Reggie's. Now... Before I forget, I've got a minute and 12 seconds of Bewitcher on my phone from that show. Stick around. At the end of this video, I'm just going to tack it on at the end. It's only like a minute and 12 seconds, so I never bother to upload it. I'll just stick it at the end. So stick around at the end. It's good stuff. Uh, if you've never heard Bewitcher, or even if you've heard them, you know, check them out. Uh, can't remember the song, but I know it's on my phone. So, yeah. Uh, next up is another what you would call blackened speed metal. This is a one-man blackened speed metal project from Scotland, I believe. Yes, Scotland. This is The Affair of the Poisons. Really good stuff. 
I keep forgetting labels. This is on Peaceville. Uh, the Bewitchers on Shadow Kingdom Records. Did I say Beermarked? Was on Hammerheart Records. That's as far back as I'm going. I keep forgetting. I'm sorry. Let's see what's inside. You have Peaceville list of Peaceville releases. That's cool. That's really cool. All their releases. Some pictures. You have lyrics. Oh, this was the inner sleeve. Yeah. The inner sleeve had uh has the lyrics on it. And it is just on black vinyl. Nothing special. This is, I'll read the hype sticker, the second studio album of supreme black and thrash metal devastation from the rising UK Titans. Okay, it's a one-man band. But, anyway, uh, James McBain is the name of the guy behind, behind Hell Ripper. Uh, does a good job, I'll read my notes, so I'm going off track here. Uh, does a good job capturing the old school speed metal spirit. A little more so than Bewitcher. Bewitcher's great, don't get me wrong. Get... Bewitcher's great, don't get me wrong. But, I don't know, this was a little more speed metal-y. I mean, the hype sticker calls it black and thrash, but I call it speed metal. Black and speed metal. It's good stuff. A little bit rawer and less polished than Bewitcher, I think. Bewitcher's like I said, this isn't a knock on either on Bewitcher. I'm just explaining the differences because they're both black and speed metal. Next up, we've got some black metal from Sweden. Dark Funeral, Where Shadows Forever Reign. This is a gatefold. Lyrics. Band photos on the back. It is just on black vinyl. Artwork on the labels there. Oops, upside down. Anyway, uh, not their most recent album. It's the one before from 2016. I'm sure you've heard of them. You know, they're they're. You know, they're black metal, but they're quite popular. Features uh, Dominator on drums. I love Dominator. If you don't know who Dominator is, just search Dominator Drum Cam on YouTube and watch drum cams from his Dark Funeral days. No longer with the band, unfortunately. Was not with them when I saw them live. But I'm pretty sure he wasn't with them. Anyway... This is a really, really good album. I don't know if I'd go so far as to say it's a great album, but it's a really, really good album. Okay. Now, next up is another Dark Funeral. This is We Are the Apocalypse. This is their most recent album. Lyrics, band photo. Now, let me tell you about this album. Hold on, it's not going in. Let me tell you about this album, right? So, hold on. Nice red vinyl. So, this came out this year. I streamed it after it came out. Streamed it one time, just to check it out. Streamed it while I was working, you know. Saw it in a record store, and I said, hey, I remember liking it, I'm going to buy it. Kind of regret buying We 
year of the apocalypse. Let me hold it up while I bash it. I'm not going to bash it. It's Dark Funeral. It's not terrible. I mean, Lord Ariman, he's great. You know what what he does. You know he's you know he's in charge. Great music he writes. And I love the vocalist. Okay, they've had a couple different vocalists over the years. I love this one. Can't pronounce his name. I always call him, you know, Helmet Jar. I don't know how to say it. I'll put it up on the screen. You know, Helmet Jar. I like him. But, and this isn't new with this album, where the music kind of slows down and the vocalist starts talking, right? I counted. Out of the nine songs on this album, six of them have parts where the vocalist stops singing and starts talking. You know, I'm sure talking about something evil, you know, fine. It's just too much. Too much, you know. And, like I said, not terrible. I'm going to see them soon. You know, they're opening for Cannibal Corpse. I got tickets to that up in Juliet. So I'm going to see them. And I'm sure they'll be great. But, I don't know, six out of nine songs with talking parts is a little bit too much for me. And, like I said, I'm not saying it's a terrible album. I'm just saying I kind of regret buying it because I don't see myself. Now that I've noticed that it happens so much, it just sticks out, you know. And it's kind of ruined the album for me. I'll just admit it. That's ruined this album for me, all these talking parts. <sighs> Sorry. I feel like I'm in a bit of a mood today. Is it coming across? Am I coming across cranky? Because I feel a little bit like I am. I apologize, if so. Now, next up. Not metal, technically. But the channel is mostly metal, right? That's why I call it that, so I can throw stuff like this in. Kiss. Hotter than hell. This might be my favorite KISS album. Maybe. Now, eventually, eventually I'm probably going to buy some more KISS on vinyl. Uh, basically, I like all their studio albums through Dynasty. After that, I really could care less. I stopped listening to them when I was 10 years old. I still love their old stuff, right? I'm probably going to buy eventually, you know, next up, I'll probably want to buy a uh, Dress to Kill, right? Because I, I remember loving that one too, you know. So once I buy that and listen to it, that might become my favorite. But as of right now, this is my favorite Kiss album. Their second studio album from 1974. Four, right has maybe the reason I love it so much it has one of my all time favorite Kiss songs on it and that is track 3 Going Blind I don't know why but I've always loved Going Blind it's just a great song I think uh, the only weak song on the album is Mainline Mainline I think is kind of weak other than that, it's a strong album. I've always loved the cover. I've loved the Japanese, you know, characters on it. I've always loved the little, you know, the thumbs and the and the fingers. I always liked that. Always kind of always liked Ace the best. And this kind of, to me, like. You know, it's like, here's Paul, like, getting it on with a woman. And Peter's got the nude woman at his feet. And Gene's over here breathing fire, you know, being all scary and evil. And here's Ace, he's just chilling. He's just sitting on the table, you know, being bored, you know. So I always kind of related more with Ace, you know. 
that was more my speed, you know, sitting by myself in the room, listening to music. Anyway, hotter than hell. Last. Oops. Nothing fancy, black vinyl. Last is One More Kiss. Kiss Alive. Now, you might notice something odd on the cover. This is the German version of this album. So, if you're not familiar, the SS in Kiss looks too similar to the SS, the Nazi SS. So when they released KISS albums in Germany, they had to modify the logo to modify the SS. Because this originally was, you know, the cool looking SS in lights, and they changed it to like two backward Zs. You know. And they did it everywhere. They changed it on the drum kit. You know, they changed it on the side on the back. You know, everything, everything. You know, they changed it. They changed the logo. There's hotter than hell with, you know, with the modified logo. So, when I just saw how ridiculous that looked, I had to buy this. Great album, you know. Remember liking Alive 2 more as a child. Haven't listened to that one in a while. Would probably buy that one on vinyl too, you know. If the opportunity arises. Uh... You know, classic kiss, what can I say? So, two disc set, you know, Casablanca labels, black vinyl, nothing, nothing to write home about. Anyway, I've already said it, I'll just repeat myself. Next update will be all CDs. This is the plan, is next video... I'm going to show you my CD collection, okay, because just like with vinyl, I sold my collection, you know, years ago, I talked about that in one of my other videos, I sold my collection, you know, all but like, I think, a handful. I have, over the last 20 years or so, since I sold my collection, picked up a CD here and there, so I've got a shelf with maybe that many CDs on it. You know, some people have wall after wall after wall. I've got one shelf with maybe, you know, what is that? Not even three feet. You know, not even three feet of, of CDs on a shelf. That's my entire collection. And like I said, I'm starting again. I've started actively shopping for CDs and buying CDs, you know. And that's what the first video will be, is everything I've accumulated over the last several years and then everything I've accumulated, like, this year, you know. So, so, that's all I've got this time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, Bewitcher, a minute and 12 seconds, starts now. Neva. We got a new album out we put it out earlier this year. It's entitled Woo. Curse Be That Kingdom. Yeah. I'm gonna get some shit out there right now. This is the first single face. The satanic magic attack. Yeah.